I'm going to be showing you an under the sea design that is a very long sculpted stiletto. I love to sculpt stilettos. I think it is such an enjoyable process to see how teeny tiny to get that point. And then there's a bunch of coral structures and fish. I love it. It's so aquatic feeling. It's so bright. It kind of makes up for the dreary weather of November. I hope you like it. And don't forget to click subscribe to see my future videos as well. We are going to begin by transitioning the nail bed onto the nail form. If you have any questions about fitting a nail form, I do have some videos that do cover that a little bit more closely in the past, so I can put links to those in the description box below. But otherwise, just take clear acrylic, blend that down. This is a closed tip nail form, which means when you're sculpting a stiletto, you want the nail form to be pinched all the way to the length that you want. Because I do want this nail to go all the way to the very end of my nail form, I'm just going to pinch it at the very tip. Then with a rich blue shade of acrylic, a darker blue, I'm going to apply that over the very tip of the nail. The color of acrylic I'm using is not one that is usually meant or used for sculpting overlays, and so it was kind of a little sticky, but it does work. And then I'm going to take a brighter shade of blue, and I'm going to apply that to the upper area from cuticle down, and then slowly just try to blend it in. I'm going to take a third shade of blue, this one that has some glitter, and really create that transition from the light blue to that glittery to the dark. I don't want a smooth transition. I want to be a little bit blotchy between the lighter blue and the darker color. When you look at a picture of the ocean from underneath, there isn't this smooth transition. There's waves of light and there's different shadows and stuff that come through. So if it's a little bit um, patchy, if you will, I think that actually adds to the effect. Encapsulate the whole nail with a layer of clear acrylic. Make sure you're building up your nail structure. Look at this nail from the side. Stilettos are notorious for having a dip in the middle. If that is the case, don't feel any, you know, it's okay. Fill it in, take off your nail form once it has been cured, file it into shape, start with an e-file, and then use a hand file to do the finish filing. Use your finger, just run it along the shape of the nail, make sure that there's no bumps. You'll be able to feel if there's a ridge or a dip that you need to fix. So I'm constantly just running my finger over the surface of it to make sure that it is exactly how it should be. Once you are happy with the generalized shape of this nail, you can cleanse it with some acetone and set it aside. Now I'm going to take some very glittery gold toned acrylic and I'm going to sculpt kind of a random looking shape and then I'm going to poke a bunch of holes of it, holes in it with a dotting tool. This is to make my first rock structure that is going to be the base that everything is, you know, placed on with the nail. So I'm going to just sculpt this big piece and then as soon as it's pick upable, I'm going to slide my brush underneath it, pick it up and then I'm going to set it on the nail and I'm just going to kind of press my brush into it, make it a little bit more uneven looking. Like I said, this is a rock structure, so I don't want it to look smooth and perfect. I do want it to have a slightly damaged appearance to it. Press it in, poke it at, poke at it, all that great stuff. And just to finish off the back of it with a little bit more of the gold acrylic, add more layers to that if you need to anywhere that it seems like it just needs a little bit more rockiness. Make a second structure, slightly smaller this time. This one is going to be near the tip of the nail, so you don't want it to be too big to mess up the shape that you have going with your stiletto that you worked so hard on make another series of holes into this one wait until it starts to turn matte slide your brush underneath it wiggle it off of the nail from backing and place it on the nail after you have both of those on there i absolutely love just how they worked out it's a little unsure it's, you know it's not a set in stone thing when you're sculpting something like this because it's a little randomized when you're sculpting it and adding the holes. So it's always really encouraging when they turn out in a really nice way. I'm going to sculpt some strips of seaweed on a nail firm backing once again with a bright shade of green. Pat out a long skinny, long skinny strip for the seaweed. Once it turns matte, slide your brush underneath it. Press the bottom of it down onto the nail and then use your fingers and your brush to twirl it around so that it curls. Repeat the process with however many seaweeds you want to add. If they start to cure too much, they aren't going to want to twist and hold their shape. If that happens, as long as you got the twist shape in place, what you can do is you can take a tiny little bit of nail glue and you can tack it down. I like to dip something into nail glue and then place it where I want the leaf or the piece of seaweed to be held down. This is one that's causing me a little bit of extra work. So just you can just hold it in place. And then if you take like a tweezers or something to add just a little dot of the nail glue, then just hold that piece of seaweed down onto the nail glue, wait, and then you should be able to let go. Like I said, repeat for as many pieces of seaweed as you want to add, different areas of the nail. Don't just focus them in one spot. 
back to my nail form backing, I'm going to be sculpting some different coral shapes. The first one I'm going to make is a very tubular looking coral. Make it very thick, so sculpt it so that there's actually some puffiness to the shape of the acrylic. Point it on one side, route it on the other, and then take your tweezers that is pointy, dipped into some clear acrylic powder, and press in the top of your coral piece so that it does have a hole in the very top of it. As you're sculpting those, making sure your acrylic is at just the right moment so that it holds the shape of that hole in the middle. It doesn't sink back in and it's still pliable enough that the hole will be able to be made without messing up the acrylic is the hard part. It's about trial and error and the first ones you make may not turn out very well, but just keep doing it. Eventually you'll get one that really holds its shape perfectly and it just turns out exactly how you want it to. Make some of them a little bigger than others so that when you line them up together, you can see them from the front and the back. I'm then going to add a little bit more of a shelf on my one rock structure that is going to have these coral pieces on it with more of the gold glitter acrylic. Same thing, after you place it down, create some little dots with the dotting tool and then grab your pink pieces of coral and you're going to dip the one end into some nail glue and then press them underneath that rock structure so that it looks like they're coming out from behind it. Add, I like to do them in clusters of either three or five generally and that's the same thing for say the fish and the seaweed clusters of three and five is just a good mix unless it's one but odd numbers seem to look better together than even numbers it all just seems a little bit more balanced on your nail form backing you can make a whole bunch of different shapes of coral different types of things you can make sea fans and um, staghorn coral is also a really cool one just have fun with it I've said this in other videos where I've made under the sea items. I always recommend that you look up some photos, get some images, look up different reefs that are across the ocean, get some images that are realistic, take, you know, actual photos that divers have taken, look at pictures that are from, or, you know, illustrations of coral. Illustrations are super helpful. If you don't know where to find illustrations, go to your local library find a coral identification book. So something that somebody would use if they were going on a under the sea expedition and they wanted to know what everything is. The books are super detailed. Not only do they have illustrations that are beautifully done with so much detail, but they will also describe to you the coral and they'll tell you different identifying features of them. And you may read something that you wouldn't have seen in the picture. And that may help you in ways that you didn't expect it to. I know when I was doing a mural, an under the sea mural for a local nail salon so many years ago. It feels like a lifetime ago. Um, that's what I did. I got a whole bunch of books from the library and then I just flipped through them until I found something that I liked. And then not only could I see, same thing for fish, not only could I see the pictures, but the description and how they live. Do they live in, you know, on their own or do they live in a school? How does, you know, what does their life look like? It gives you so much detail so that when you go to start creating art, you have the information that just makes it feel that much more alive. Once you have a nice selection of coral pieces sculpted, you can start placing them on the nail. The reason I did those pink ones to start with is I thought that if I did one section and I placed it down, that would give me a good gauge on how many other pieces I thought I would need. Plus, I was excited by the pink and I couldn't help myself and I needed to stick that on the nail as soon as I could because, you know, I, I like pink in case you have not ever guessed that before. I'm going to attach all of these different pieces if the nail glue is difficult, sometimes nail glue is a pain and that doesn't want to cooperate. A little bit of clear acrylic and then set your piece in will also work. With all of these tiny little pieces, I didn't want to use clear acrylic to attach all of them because I was worried that it would start to bulk it up. And I was trying to do as much as I could just with nail glue to begin with, which I feel like is the best choice for this particular design. With the nail glue, you don't have any extra thickness to it. And then you can go through and you can add the security with the clear acrylic after all the pieces are attached and you don't end up with too much of it. It's just a little bit more of a smooth, smooth end result. So if you can get away with the nail glue, I would recommend that. As you may or may not notice, the staghorn coral that I did with the green is slightly different from the green seaweed. It's a darker shade, doesn't have any glitter in it, whereas the seaweed does have some glitter. If you're going to use the same color to represent more than one thing, I would recommend just having there be some slight difference with it. You know, maybe one has glitter, one doesn't. That can even come with your finished painting later. You can, you know, highlight one of them with more of a yellow color and add some shading on the other one with more of a teal color or a darker shade of green or something just to make them distinguished. So they're not identical to each other. If you're adding more than one coral that is different colors, but the same shape, do the same thing. One of them should be larger than the other, or instead of both of them, like those two circular cor corals or those rounder ones, one of them 
maybe is a little bit more of a perfect circle. One of them is more of an oval, just something to make them unique. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to sculpt a little tiny sea star with a very bright orange acrylic, such a cute little sea star. I love adding them in. The hard thing is because this is so tiny, everything I'm sculpting has to be kind of like shrunk down. And I felt like the sea stars were going to be too big if I added too many of them. So I'm just going to do one bright little sea star. And then with my different colors of acrylic from the other things that I've done, I'm going to sculpt my fish. Just like I said with the coral, if you want to really go in depth with this and find different types of fish, those identification books are phenomenal. And a lot of them will have a mix of coral and fish together and other under the sea, <laughs> under the sea creatures. So if you want to get all of your, all your ducks in a row with that, definitely recommended. And if you are an under the sea person and you just love looking at this stuff, the book is going to be super enjoyable anyway. It's just going to be fun to flip through. The other thing, if you are an under the sea person and you like to look at them, I did do an octopus video that is really similar to this one as far as style goes and aesthetic. And if you are, you know, if you like this type of thing, I definitely recommend that octopus video. And I'll put a link to that in the description box below. Once all of your fish are sculpted, don't worry about different colors. Make them all just a single color for the time being. You can add details later then you can start attaching them. Attach them together in groups, in little schools, and place them in areas where it seems like the colors will shine the best. So for instance, if you have pink fish, even if they're a different shade of pink from pink coral, don't place them where the fish will overlap the pink. So don't have the two colors that are overlapping each other. Try to space things out and mix them up so that you have some variety. I wanted my brightest shade of fish, those really neon yellow ones to be near the tip. I figured they would kind of brighten up that area that didn't have much else that was that neon. I have my orange fish in the middle. There was a lot of green right there. So the orange and the green would contrast together very well. I'm going to attach them. You can even place your fish behind some of the coral pieces if there is space and you want to, and you want to have them kind of hiding. I'm going to attach the last one, make some of your fish facing the left, some of your fish facing, facing the right. And then I'm going to add my pink ones last but not least to the upper corner. Because I did have two pieces of pink coral, I didn't want them to be down below because that would have been too close to either of the other two pinks. And then after they're all attached, secure behind them with some clear acrylic and secure behind everything with clear acrylic if you have not yet done so. You will just find little things you're like, yep, this needs some, this needs some extra stuff and just keep going through and any place where it sticks up and you can add, even if it's just the tiniest bit of clear acrylic underneath it, it will make such a difference in the end and it'll make it so that if you accidentally drop this one or you do something or you sneeze, it won't break. All of these tiny little pieces are very, very delicate because they are very thin. And this is the one step that you should not miss of anything. If you're going to try to, to make it a little easier on yourself, don't, don't skip out on this one. After you are done with all of that acrylic backfilling, then you're going to take acrylic paint and you're going to start adding the details to all of your little acrylic corals. The great thing with this design is there's so much detail that is sculpted in, even though they are single color pieces and on their own, they wouldn't have that much detail. But because it is a mix of color and it's just this fantastical combination, you don't have to detail them that much. The biggest things that I would recommend that you make sure that you do is any place where there is a bunch of the same color together, specifically those tube looking corals, I would make sure that you do add a little bit of detailing to those, as well as the ones that are more brainy looking. You may wanna consider adding a little bit of detail to those just to make sure that the holes are visible. Any of the places where, like I said, there's the same color and it's layered on top of each other, that's where you may wanna focus a little more of your detailing. Otherwise, you don't have to do too much. You do want to add some detail to your fish. If they do have a second color on them, the pink ones, I added some patches of yellow. I'm going to make the orange ones something like a clownfish with some white stripes and then some black and just any place where it seems like it is needed to add those extra details to your fish, especially add to them. I added some very intense black lines to all of my fish. I felt with the fish that they needed that extra kind of a highlight that extra vivid quality to them so that you saw them amidst all of this plant and animal background that is going on and that those little details in black really sold the fish. So if you're going to do anything that's extra detailed, make sure it is them. 
apply some gel top coat to the background. I'm using a gel sealer. If you have any questions about gel sealer versus gel top coat, I get questions on that all the time. I have a video from a couple years ago that is specifically about the difference between those two. And I'll put a link to that in the description box below. Otherwise I have some 3d glaze over the top of the coral that I want to be a little shiny. 3d glaze was not covered in that other video, but it is a regular top coat. It's a regular lacquer top coat essentially. And it just over the top of acrylic doesn't dry as shiny. I hope you guys like this design. And like I said, I will have some videos in the description box below for you to check out and I will see you all next time. Bye.